Hello, thank you for joining me on this Positive Thursday. On this Positive Thursday, we're going to talk about real friends and fake friends. That's right. How do many of let me ask each one of you, how many of y'all can say, how many real friends do I have? True friends, the one that's going to be there for you, do the ups and the downs, the ones that's going to tell you right from wrong, not takers. I know this gives y'all something to really talk about. Makes you want to say, hmm, who is my real friends? How many friends can you count on your finger that you know is a true friend without even having to just think about it right offhand? And that's going to be there for you, mainly during the hard times. If you can't even think of one person, you need to get rid of, you need to get rid of that friend or those friends, period. I want to ask each one of you again. First, let me introduce myself. For those who you always join me on my podcast, hello, thank you for joining me again. And for the newcomers, thank you. My name is Zori Flower. Welcome. Now, let me ask you this question again. How many of y'all, what is the definition of a real friend? Think about that. How do y'all describe a real friend, someone that you can talk to, and you can just, you know, you know it's going to be there for you and not going to bite your back out. And the reason why I'm talking about this topic is I know that a lot of people can relate to, relate to that situation. And we have so much stuff going on in this world. We all face challenges and obstacles. But I want to tell you all what I've been going through. And I hope that it can help someone else that's been going through a lot as well, too. Um, I say the last couple, I say the last year or so, you know, it's been a lot going on. And even like the last couple of weeks and my circle is really small. I don't have like a lot of friends, mostly my family is my friends. I have a lot of brothers and sisters, some that I'm close with and some not, but anyway, to make a long story short. So anyway, I've been going through like a lot of different changes. Um, we're starting with new, new beginnings and, you know, just restarting everything over with. And I've been having some, you know, financial troubles, trying to get things done, do this and that. You know, things is expensive. Things is getting better. I know God is going to work it out. But, like, I have, like, maybe about, i say three people that I can say is truly a friend. But one of the people that I thought that was really my friend, that I thought that really cared about me, I found out they wasn't who they said they was. And it made me want to talk about, you know, who are really your friend. You know, when you're going through ch challenges, not even through obstacles, but someone you know that you can laugh with, someone that you know, without a doubt, if you're in a hospital, they're going to come. Or if you're even far away, they're going to catch a flight and they're going to come, um, you know, see you. So anyway, I had a situation where, like right now, I'm in the process of moving and a male associate of mine's. I thought that, you know, he really cared about me and I thought that he was really a true friend. So I called him. Well, he's been acting a little distance, but anyway, I, you know, I don't, one thing about, I have, I have learned over the years about friendships and everything like that is that people change up on, people change like the weather, not even just with friends, um, but family. I had a friend, you know, we've been talking, you know, for a while, you know, I thought that he really cared about me. So when I told him about my situation and, you know, what was going on, he started to act like really funny and just started to change up everything that he said we was going to do. He didn't do what he, he didn't do. And there's a lot of different things I started to see in his behavior and not saying that I'm dependent on anyone else, but that's how I'm just bringing this up. But that's how you find out, you know, who is who. And, but what some people don't understand is that the small things go a long way. To me, the definition of a true friend is someone that's supportive, loving, that's going to be there for you through the hard times, that's going to elevate you and not take away. And I had many times, like before in my past before, like I had a friend that I um, was friends with since high school. We're no longer friends, but I found out that person, they was uh, talking about me behind my back and a lot of other stuff. And we just grew apart from each other. And the person that I thought they was, they wasn't who they who I thought they was. So God revealed that to me. So, you know, you get tired of, you know, the, the, the betrayal, 
And it makes you question about who is your real friend. You know, who can you really trust? Something to think about, right? So, um, you know, I was just reevaluating different things, thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, I don't, you know, I don't ask anybody for anything. You know, I'm very independent. But also, there's nothing wrong with asking for help if you need it. I don't think so at all. I think that asking for help makes you strong. It makes you, um, it gives you integrity. You don't have to be prideful or eagerness because I used to go through that and thought that, you know, me asking for help made me weak. Now I understand that asking for help is okay. And, um, you know, it's really hurtful, though, you know, when you see the real side of people. But I got to understand that people are who they are and um, you can't change anyone. And even more so, I learned more is that, you know, the number, per- number one person that I can depend on is God. You know, my Lord and Savior, Jesus, because time at the time he comes through for me, he make a way when I'm going through different changes or he see that I need anything or I'm going through something. He always touches someone else and he reaches out to me or he lines something up so so I can, you know, be okay. And, um, the most important thing is that we need to evaluate our relationships and friendships, you know, as far as like really understanding the definition of, you know, who is our real friends. And especially if you go into transformation, you know, like myself or, you know, let's go into changes and make you evaluate your friendships and, you know, who cares about you, truly cares about you. And, um, you know, where I'm at in my life, I'm evaluating, like, you know, how I build relationships and being really particular about, you know, who I let in my circle or who I'm building a relationship with, whether it's a friendship or a love, a regular friendship or a love relationship. And sometimes you don't even have to know, like, say, for example, if you knew somebody for a long time, not even for a long time, but you start to, and you're in the beginning stages, you know, I think sometimes the signs are there. You know, we see a person not who they really are as far as feeling a, a friendship or friend, being a friend with somebody. But sometimes we ignore them signs and we get like, you know, we, we, we get hurt in the process. And even to where and having a real friendship and real friends can go far beyond just regular friendships. Even love relationships, people being married to a spouse for like 20 and 30 years. And they found out that they wasn't just, they, they, they love a friend wasn't who they said they was. And I just want to share with y'all one of the stories about how Wendy Williams and her husband, how he stabbed her in the back. You know, she, you know, was married to him for a very long time. I think his name's Kevin. Now, y'all probably heard the story. She was married to Kevin, I think, for like maybe over like, what, 15 years, I believe. And um, she found out that he was seeing this woman, this other woman on the side. It's been going on for years, the rumors, but she was in denial, and he wound up having a baby. Well, he, a, a mistress wound up having a baby by him. He wound up getting another woman pregnant. So I know she felt really hurt, embarrassed, and being stabbed in the back like that by her, not only just her husband, but her friend that she knew and been with for years. So I wanted to just share a brief clip of the story about what happened in this situation. Y'all let me know what you think. Welcome to Francis. He's Alvin Hunter. He is not worth the ink or the paper on your marriage license. May y'all recall when Wendy filed for divorce on April the 11th. During that time, her husband, Kelvin, made a statement. He was on his baby, baby, please. He began getting all of his belongings out of the home, yet he did not file a response. That was up until May the 6th. Now, Kelvin responded saying that he wanted spousal support, child support for their son that will be 19 in August, as well as when he paid for the son's college tuition. Well, not only that, Kelvin also wants Wendy to pay for his legal fees for this divorce that they're going through. He is doing way too much. Now, also in his decree, Kelvin is asking for a split in personal assets that they acquired during the marriage. You pop-up, biscuit head, even conniving hair club for men having pumps. 
Kevin waited until the sale was final on this last home that he was trying to get rid of before he responded to Wendy's divorce papers. Now, y'all remember when we broke the story that the house that he shared with Sharina was going up for sale back in December. Y'all remember I had contacts with the realtor. Well, I talked to the realtor about a month ago, and they said that it was going through escrow and should be closing soon. So I told them I wanted to purchase the property, go in and divorce proceedings. Guess what would have happened? They would have had to split everything 50-50, including that house. Although Kelvin did put the property in his LLC's name, Morris T. LLC, there's a possibility that the property still would have been up for question. So the arena are living in now is being rented. So it's not in his name. They can't split that because it's not in his name. He doesn't own it. Now, as you may remember, Kelvin also sold his... Of over 20 years, Kevin Hunter, Wendy admitted in her memoir that he cheated her on her 19 years ago, right after the birth of their son. That's a red flag to me. Hello? <laughs> I mean, if you're not getting it on and enjoying each other in the honeymoon period, imagine when the black hole appears, you know? <laughs> it is. Okay, now moving forward, I would like to list six, six signs that you have a good friend. Number one, someone, a friend that you don't have to second guess that's your friend. Number two, they call you and check up on you. Not just you checking up on them, but they call you and making sure that you're okay. Number three, they're reliable and they're dependent, dependable. Number to listen to the full episode of this positive Thursday, Real Friends, Fake Friends, at part one and two, go to Anchor Zoe Flower FM.